A subscriber asked me to provide some guidelines for using family tables, especially with regards to CAD data management like with Windchill. And so that's what we'll cover in this video. And I'm going to warn you, there's no demonstration. It's just me talking to three text-heavy slides. So I apologize for being boring if it's boring. So first off, let's talk about creating the family table to begin with. And like I showed in the video on family tables, there are three things that you should do before you even jump into the family table dialog box. First, make your model user friendly by renaming the features in the model tree. And especially the ones that are going to appear as columns in the family table should have a different name than the defaults that Creo Parametric gives like extrude one or hole two or round three. Also, rename the dimensions that will appear in the family table. By default, they'll be the letter D followed by a number, and that's never intuitive regarding what that controls. So give it an intuitive name. And also, you're going to be changing dimensions, and those dimensions are going to propagate other changes parametrically in your model. So be sure to write relations so that when some features change other dimensions will update properly and you won't get weird looking geometry or regeneration failures also you're going to start off by creating the generic which is the basis for the family table a lot of times they'll have the same values as the component that you want to place in a bunch of assemblies but you should not assemble the generic and to avoid doing that you should create an instance, probably the very first instance in the family table to have the same values as the generic so that you assemble that instead of the generic. And a big one, people sometimes forget to do this. Always verify your family table after making any changes to the model and any changes to the family table. If you run model check, it'll let you know that you haven't verified it. Also, Windchill is really good about flagging that before you try to do any kind of data management operation. But if you're not working in that environment, it's real easy to make a change and then forget to verify later on. All right, some tips regarding modeling. And like I mentioned on the previous slide, you should never assemble the generic as a component in an assembly. And the main reason for that is if you assemble the generic, a lot of times it's gonna drag the entire family table along with it. Another tip regarding family tables, sheet metal parts. And this is something I see a lot and to be honest, it drives me a little bit crazy. In sheet metal mode, you can create a flat pattern or you can do an unbend all in order to document the flat version of the model instead of the fully formed. And the reason that people do that is so when they create a drawing, they like to document both. Hey, here's how it looks fully formed. And then this is the flat version. And even worse, they'll throw on a whole bunch of different dimensions that lay out the location of the bends and the various different features in the flattened version. If you're not a sheet metal manufacturer, you don't know the correct de developed lengths of the various bends and the size of the blank that's going to be necessary in order to generate that component. So I really see no need for companies that aren't sheet metal manufacturers to even bother documenting the flat state. If you're gonna have a vendor, let them take care of all that so you don't need to create a flat state. But if you still insist on doing that, you can do that with part simplified representations and not family tables. Another big one, similar to the sheet metal situation, sometimes people are looking to make only one design variation of a part. So they'll create a family table with only two instances, the generic and the one variation. And again, family tables have a lot more overhead than regular components. So instead of creating a family table that only has one other instance, use an inheritance feature. And that's one of the main reasons that the inheritance feature was created besides also being able to document different manufacturing states of a component. And a big one, nested family tables. 
avoid them if you can. And a nested family table is when you take a generic and then you make a family table, and then inside of one of the instances in the family table, you make a family table inside of it. And it's just really adds another dimension to the complexity of data management with all those different instances. And speaking of which, let's talk about some CAD data management guidelines. So if you're not assembling the generic as a component, then the generic really doesn't need a WT part, also referred to sometimes as an enterprise part or a gray gear because of the symbol that it has in Windchill. But again, if for some reason you are assembling the generic, which you really, really shouldn't be doing, then the generic should have a WT part uh, just so that your product structures will be correct. Also, be aware that any kind of modification that's going to require, require a verify operation in Creo Parametric is going to require that all the instances and the generic need to be checked out and then you check them back in and the entire family table is going to iterate. Sort of along the same line, along the same lines, uh, in, in Windchill, you can revise and promote individual instances separately from other individual instances. So for example, you could have some instances that are still in work and other ones are released and some are rev A and others are rev B, C, D and so on and so forth. I find that gets a little messy and so I recommend that if you're going to revise or promote or set state any instance I recommend that you do the entire family table together and if you're using WT parts make sure that you revise and promote them as well because if you forget to include the WT parts you end up breaking the link between them. If you're using family tables, especially for component or commercial off-the-shelf components or stuff that's being used as standard components, lock the family tables down to prevent people from accidentally modifying them when you don't want them to. And along the same lines, you should limit that modify access to certain libraries or even certain products uh, to prevent people from being able to do stuff to your standard components. And the last one to mention, be aware that most save as operations that you would want to do to a family table, for example, taking a bunch of instances and saving them as standalone items or creating a new family table from the existing family table or making new instances inside of the same family table need to be performed in Windchill, not in Creo Parametric. Uh, and when you're performing these different operations in Windchill, you usually can do them from either the common space or from a workspace. About the only kind of save as operation that you can do in Creo Parametric is if you're taking an instance and you're trying to save it as a standalone item. So I hope these different tips and tricks and healthy practices regarding family tables help you. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and click the subscribe button. Thank you very much.